I wrestled a Moroccan midget. <laughs> I was backpacking in Europe in 93 and I got lost in Amsterdam and I bumped, in, I bumped into this very nice midget. And the reason I noticed him is that his tongue was out and I couldn't tell if he was flirting with me or he was just overheated because of the humidity. <laughs> but he turned out to be a really nice midget at first and then he took me dangerously close to a dike. I mean, the, the water version. <laughs> Not the water version. And then he tried to get in my pants. But no, not to take off my pants, silly. Um, I was wearing khakis and my wallet was in my front pocket. And um, so, uh, but that ninja was not gonna get my wallet or my traveler's checks, that's for sure. So we were wrestling. And then I realized this is dangerously close to dwarf tossing if I just let him go. Oops. And I felt, I felt so bad until I had to check the time, and I realized that bitch had my watch. <laughs> Luckily, my next stop was Belgium, where all my relatives live, and uh, I told the story house to house, and I ended up with three watches. So, pretty good. <laughs> so my partner and I, we agree that I am verbally dyslexic, and then I have two friends that are dyslexic, and the three of us, when we get together, we you know, compete. It's like we're competing for stories. So I have a straight friend and he goes, I'm so dyslexic. How's my straight voice going? Um, <laughs> I'm so dyslexic that I got held back in class. And then Ethel goes, I'm so dyslexic for so long that I had to sit at the back of the class. You win, Ethel, you win. You should do stand up. So Ethel, I'm so dyslexic. How dyslexic are you? I'm so dyslexic that I married a pedophile because I couldn't read the signs. <laughs> no, she did it. <laughs> married a pedophile. Anyway, I worked two years at the casino down there as a host, and I loved it because I loved me some torture. Obviously, I'm sitting up here, right? <laughs> so, um, second day, I was working there, I was in the lecture and no one was talking. So I said, I can't believe that I've been here, I was here eight hours yesterday and no one mentioned that asshole Donald Trump. And then this guy goes, oh, you like to have fun. And I go, oh yeah. Last year I dressed up as Donald Trump at Halloween because I wanted to know what it would be like to be a pussy grabber for 24 hours. <laughs> so then I went back to my station at work and HR and my supervisor walked by and they go, so, how's it going, though? And I go, oh, good, I just made a new friend in the lunchroom. I told him that I dressed up at Halloween last year as Donald Trump because I wanted to know what it would be like a, to be a pussy grabber for 24 hours. When they picked their jaws up off the ground, they said, you can't say this here. I go, you mean I can't say shit here? They go, no. I, I said, um, sorry, I, uh, I, uh, then, then they, um, sorry. <laughs> That's not funny. Uh, yes, yeah, breathe, that's right. <laughs> so, um, you, yeah, you can't say shit here. And I go, well, I, I was uh, a Christian until I was 29, I never swore, so I could be Christian doll working here. And they go, no, 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 just be yourself. So HR leans on the counter and goes, so when did you first know you were gay? And I said, when I knew I wasn't a pussy grabber. <laughs> I came back well, didn't I? Anyway, so, <laughs> when I started the other post, when I started the other host, uh, she was beautiful, married, but she hated to work. So the first Saturday, she, she texted me, I've got an allergy to sushi, I won't be in. The second Saturday, she texted me that she had a sleepover with her friend, and she got head lice, and she drove all night looking for a D-lice clinic. The third Saturday, she said a bunny hopped into her apartment, and she got an allergy to bunny. So I go into work and I go, anything new? Pretending I don't know. And then my, my supervisor goes, no, nothing. Oh yeah, Mary won't be in. And I go, because she's not allergic to uh, a bunny. And I go, I'm allergic to pussy, but I still show up. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're a tough crowd. You should do material in front of gamblers who haven't slept for 24 hours. <laughs> okay, so I got a really good one. Um, what's the worst come online to a germaphobe, homosexual host. Meet me in the garbage room, no cameras. <laughs> yeah, that happened to me. Anyway, so, 
Okay, so uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays are our busiest day, 299 breakfast. And this, um, this regular is there to come in, and this is 9.30 in the morning, and this, the wife says to me, what do you do on your other job? Are you an uh, escort? And I go, no. <laughs> my, par my partner is here, and he doesn't like this job, sorry. Um, and, she, and then her husband, because she goes, you're handsome, and then her husband goes, yeah, you're handsome. And I go, listen, I have nothing against hookers. In fact, I think Melania Trump should get 1.2 billion for one hand job on Donald Trump. <laughs> she goes, I think you'd make a good cocksucker. I tell my 200 coworkers, and half of them go, oh my God, what did you say? I said, thank you. <laughs> and then the other half said, weren't you offended? I go, no, I would have been offended. And she said, I don't think you'd make a good cocksucker. Thank you, London. Keep it going for Colin.